congratulations. If you're watching this video, you more than likely just purchased a Pando 2.0. In this video, we're going to give you a little orientation. You already know what comes with the trailer and you've ordered your options. But we want to make sure you understand what to expect when the trailer arrives, what you need before the trailer arrives, how to hook up your trailer, how to use everything on your trailer where everything is. And we're going to walk through all of that right now. So let's talk about how your trailer arrives. As you can see, it'll arrive on a flatbed truck and the driver will offload it for you. And we make sure to wrap it in a protective covering so that it's protected during travel. And the driver's gonna help you unwrap that. And once it's all unwrapped, now it's time to start exploring your new Pando 2.0. Next thing we want to cover is what you need before your trailer arrives. So if you just opted in for the regular two inch ball, you want to make sure you show up with a hitch ball mount with your two inch ball. Now, if you opted in for the max coupler articulating hitch, just get a hitch ball mount without that two inch ball because the max coupler is going to have two halves and then one half is going to replace that two inch ball. The next thing is you want to make sure your vehicle has a seven pin connection to hook up your trailer so that powers all your lights, your tail lights and your signal lights. And for some vehicles like the Land Cruiser and Forerunner, they locate that seven pin connection way underneath. So you may have to get a seven pin connection from Amazon or something like that, that will extend that cable to reach all the way underneath your vehicle. And of course, last but not least, is your license plate registration or some sort of permit dependent on your state so you can transport your trailer from point A to point B. Okay, let's get your trailer connected to your tow vehicle. So if you just opted in for the regular two inch ball, make sure you show up with a hitch mount with a two inch ball, you're all set. In this case, we have the max coupler articulating hitch. So you'll want to show up with the hitch mount without the two inch ball, because inside your trailer, it's going to be located in the box or inside the main cabin. You're going to find the yoke for the max coupler all wrapped up. You want to unwrap it, of course, and this is going to slide into the hole where the two inch ball is normally located, tighten up everything. And you'll see here, as we have on this vehicle, it's all ready to go. The yoke is there, ready to go to receive the other half of the max coupler you'll find a pin like this and a cotter pin. So line up your vehicle, lower your trailer down. Nice thing is these are really easy to connect, line up the hole. And if it's a little tight, just raise or lower your jack and it'll take that pressure off of the pin as it's sliding in put your cotter pin and you're all set. All right, so next thing is you wanna connect your seven pin. What the seven pin is gonna do, of course, is connect your brake lights, signal lights, and a charge line that gives you a trickle charge for your batteries while you're driving. So plug that into your seven pin on your vehicle. Of course, you wanna make sure before you show up that your vehicle is equipped with a seven pin connection. And cross your chains, connect here's spots to hook them in on each side of the hitch. You want to connect your breakaway cable. Your breakaway cable, of course, as it sounds, is if anything ever happens, your trailer becomes disconnected. You're going to connect this where the chains are connected to your vehicle. And if the trailer as ever pulls away and uh, gets disconnected, it's going to pull this pin out and apply those electric brakes and stop your trailer. So that's how you connect your trailer to your tow vehicle. Now, one of the most important things we really want you guys to do is to read all your manuals. So when you look inside your trailer, you're going to find a pouch like this. It's going to have all your manuals inside for everything on the trailer. So Please read through that. It's going to give you a lot of helpful information. Inside here, you're going to have all your keys. Sometimes you may find a key also in the front storage bin here because during travel, we need a key outside that's accessible. And then your second set of keys will be inside the trailer. So make sure to find this pouch. It's either going to be inside on the bed or in one of the shelves. 
If you opted in for the optional stabilization jacks, you're gonna find your crank handle inside the cabin of the trailer when your trailer arrives. To deploy these, just crank them down and make sure you don't use these to level the trailer. These are only used to stabilize the trailer. You always wanna level the trailer by driving up on a rock or something like that. So once you get down to the bottom and it feels firm, right there, you're good to go. Do both sides and your trailer should be nice and steady. Let's walk through a couple things that you need to know about the electrical components. The first thing is the location of the main circuit breaker. In this configuration, you'll see it's located at the back panel, but in some configurations, depending on the inverter that you chose, it may be located on the right hand side. The circuit breaker cuts off the power to the trailer, so you're not draining the batteries. So you'll wanna make sure that the circuit breaker is in the off position when you're not using the trailer and it's in storage. When you wanna run everything off of your batteries, then you simply turn it to on and your fridge, lights, and everything else will run off of the batteries. The next thing we wanna cover is the inverter. In this trailer, we have the Xantrax 2000 watt inverter, but your trailer may have a different inverter depending on what you ordered. Either way, you'll wanna turn the inverter on only when you wanna plug a 110 item into it. This would include things like laptops and other household items that you would plug into the wall at home. If you're just running the fridge, lights, and USB charging ports, then there is no need to turn the inverter on. It's important to remember that the inverter is pulling power from the batteries when it's on. So if you don't need it, then turn it off to save your battery power. The last thing we want to cover is how to charge and maintain your batteries. The best way to charge your batteries is by the shore power located here at the front of the box. This is just a regular extension cord that can be plugged into any 110 outlet. If possible, we recommend that you plug your trailer into shore power when it's in storage so you keep those batteries topped up. The next way to get power to your batteries is by plugging a solar panel into the port right below the shore power. An important thing to know is that the solar will not charge a dead battery. Solar will only help maintain your batteries. So you'll wanna make sure that you plug your panel in as soon as you get to your campsite so you can get that consistent trickle charge to your batteries. The last way to get a charge to your batteries is through the seven pin connection from your vehicle. This is also only a trickle charge, and the amount of charge coming from your vehicle varies from vehicle to vehicle. When your trailer arrives, it does not come with the charge line connected to the batteries. However, this is a simple process that we leave up to you to connect, but you'll see a junction box behind the fridge where all the wires are running into. You will need to remove the cover and refer to your manual for the instructions on how and where to connect the charge line. One of the most exciting things about the Panel 2.0 is the galley. So when you first open up the doors, make sure you give them a push as you're turning the latches. And we created a short little video you can watch on YouTube or find it on our website that walks through how to adjust these latches and how to properly open it so you don't damage any of the seals. So let's walk through a couple key things, but it's pretty straightforward. And you've probably seen a bunch of footage on this already, but you have your Optional Bluetooth stereo on this model right here. Make sure to read the manual. Really easy to pair up with your phone. Your switch for your LED lights up top and two USB ports to charge your phones. Here's your stove. Propane's located on the side. All your shelves, your sink, and that's all plumbed in with the on-demand water heater. Fridge. On the side here is where you control your temperature. Make sure to read the manual, but really straightforward. If you opted in for the second fridge on the Pando, I'm sure you know it's located in the front here as a lot of our videos show you. Uh, you just push down on this bar that releases the lock. It locks into place and you have a manual in there. You have an extra extension cord that's actually for a 110 plug-in if you wanna bring it into the house or, or whatever. One of the key things to make sure you do not do is just pull down on this when you want to close the door. There's a red button right here. Push on that, hold that, and just get the strut to pass that little red button, and now you're free to lower the door. Otherwise, in a lock position, if you force it, you're going to damage the gas strut. So next, let's walk through where the water is located, how to fill up the water, and walk through how to switch between the two tanks. 
So when you open up the door underneath the sink, you're gonna see your first water tank. Just unscrew the cap here and then fill up your tank. If you opted in for the optional second tank, it's located underneath here. Both have drains underneath here that you'll see with a little T-valve to drain the tanks if you need to. But uh, you just fill it up there for the main tank and for the secondary tank if you have it, unscrew this cap here and fill it up right there. You have a hose here for winterizing. Watch our short little video on how to winterize and dewinterize your trailer on our YouTube channel. And right behind that are two valves. These two valves will control which tank it's pulling the water from and also the valve at the bottom of the two is to use it for uh, winterizing that pulls the winterizing fluid through this hose. Pretty straightforward, but that is your water tanks and how to fill them. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about the water pump switch, the water heater, and the shower. The actual water pump is located under the sink, but the switch for the water pump is located in the side box with the on-demand water heater. Flick this switch on and you're ready to start using your sink or shower. To the right is the on-demand water heater. Simply turn on the propane, flick the switch located underneath the water heater to on, and then adjust the gas and the water flow to get your desired temperature and you're all set. There are two batteries located behind this plastic cover that powers the igniter, so if you have an issue with starting a water heater, then it may be time to replace the batteries. Once you have your water pump on and your hot water adjusted, then you're ready to use the shower. The shower nozzle has a long hose that can reach into a nearby privacy room, and there's an on-off switch located on the shower nozzle so you don't waste water. Next to the water heater is the optional furnace. Make sure to always have the propane on before turning the thermostat on, otherwise it may give you an error code. To turn the furnace on, just click the button with the flame icon located on the thermostat inside the cabin here. And then adjust the temperature by using the up and down buttons. It may take a little bit to start blowing hot air the first time that you try, but be patient and it will fire up. If you received your trailer during hot weather, then there's a good chance the temperature inside the cabin may be above your thermostat setting, and therefore it will not start. So keep that in mind when you're first setting things up and trying out your new furnace. If you do get an error code, then you have two options to reset the furnace. One is a soft reset, and to perform the soft reset, you insert a pin into this hole and gently push. If this does not work, then you may need to do a hard reset. And to do that, you will need to press a button that is located behind these cables and located under the rubber seal. Give that a push and your furnace will reset. Of course, running the furnace, stove, and water heater is a propane tank. You want to make sure that you always have the propane tank purged when filling it up to ensure you have a full tank of gas. Purging is just a step in the filling up process where they make sure all of the air is pushed out of the tank as it fills up with propane. Holding the tank to the trailer is a custom made bracket with the option of adding a padlock for extra security. Inside the cabin and right above the door are the light switches for the outside porch lights, and you'll find one on each side of the trailer. The switch for the interior lights is located here on the control panel. You also have another display to control your inverter and a 110 plug-in located at the top of the panel. There are two USB charging ports located on each side of the plug-in, and finally the thermostat for the furnace that we walked through earlier. There's a remote hanging on the wall to control the upgraded max fan, and if you opted in to keep the standard max fan, then you will manually control the fan by pressing the buttons located around the fan on your ceiling. And finally, we have the optional bed that folds into a couch. To fold it into the couch mode, simply fold the half with the smaller sections up and slide the bottom over to the other side of the trailer, and you now have a place to hang out inside the trailer. All right, so we hope that was helpful. Don't forget, we have a ton of videos coming out, a bunch of little short videos that go through every little piece of this trailer. So make sure to check out our YouTube channel. Make sure to check out offgridtrailers.com for more information. We're always posting new stuff, but uh, we hope you love your trailer. Get out there, get it packed up, and go camping. Have a great day.